烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. So I wanted to share something. We had a wonderful conversation on the community chat site today amongst some of the sadikas, and the topic of this conversation, well, it ranged over several different subjects, but the main topic was identity. Who am I? How do I know who I am? Who am I in different contexts? And how do I establish, or how do I recognize, or how do I determine my identity? This is a very important point. I mean, in the ultimate analysis, all identity is false. All identity means that one is an individual different from the supreme, and of course, from the highest point of view, that's simply an illusion. <laughs> But most of us are stuck in duality, and what that means is we consider this identity, this empirical self, to be real, and we consider the world to be real. That's where all the trouble starts, because from the very beginning of our life, we have people telling us who we are, isn't it? From being a little baby in the crib, the mother is telling you, "I'm your mother. You're my child. Your name is such and such. The family is such and such, and we live in this place, and we are." This kind of a family, and so on, like this. All of these are terms of identity. All of these ideas and concepts tell us who we are. But wait a minute. If we accept an identity that's given to us by somebody else, that person then has power. Of beingness over us. After all, if they give something, they can also take it away, huh? like your boss at work. Huh? You are the manager of the such and such division, huh? but if you don't perform properly, or even if he's just having a bad day, you can be fired, just like that. Get out, huh? So, those who give beingness, those who give identities, can also take them away, and this is the danger. See, that oh, I was just reading this morning. There was a psychological analysis of executives in New York City. Huh? This is one conversation of one psychologist talking to another. And、uh, one psychologist was saying, "You know, I have so many high-stress executive clients, and they're in so much pain and suffering because of their jobs. So I say to them, 'Well, why don't you just quit, right? But this is even more painful. <laughs> why? Because they think they are their job.'" Their job has become their identity, and this doesn't just happen with executives. The same thing is happening with steel mill workers, auto workers, truck drivers, and other more or less blue collar jobs that are being laid off due to automation. Isn't it? One of the reasons behind the opioid epidemic in the U.S. Is that so many blue blue collar laborers are losing their jobs over automation, and they just don't know what to do with themselves. 
I've seen it in my own family. My great uncle, my grandmother's brother, was a truck driver for Board and Milk Company for his whole life. From the age of 16, he started out driving a wagon and a team of four horses delivering milk. Huh? And I mean, this is a big, strong guy. Those milk containers, those metal milk containers weigh close to 100 pounds, you know? What would that be, like uh, 60 kilograms, something like that? They're really heavy. And he could just throw these things around like nothing, huh? all day long. And in the, by the time he retired, he was driving a big semi-truck, 60-foot trailer, and delivering to all major hospitals and like that. So he was a big, strong guy. Then when he retired, at age 65. Within 18 months, he was dead. Why? He had no identity other than his job and partying. That's all he knew how to do. He knew how to work very hard. Huh? And then on the weekends, he knew how to party. And he had gotten both of these skills way back in the 1920s. So when he retired, the only thing he knew how to do was sit around, watch TV, smoke cigarettes, and drink. Within 18 months, he was dead. Big, strong guy, age 67. So I can see how when a person has no identity outside what is given to them, they are at risk if they happen to lose it. And they will lose it because nobody can work their whole life. At some point, they have to retire if they're sane, you know. And they should have some interests. They should have some identity outside of their work. So, of course, if you're watching this, you probably have some identity in uh, the context of some spiritual practice or organization. But this is also risky. Why is that? Because if someone, again, an outside person like a guru or a teacher or the administrator of some spiritual group gives you an identity, they can also take it away. You can also, you can be kicked out of your group or you can lose your faith. And this is a big crisis for anyone who has invested in this kind of identity. Because as we have discussed many, many times on this channel, in this day and age, all religious organizations beyond a certain size become corrupt. And the reason they become corrupt is that people's character in Kali Yuga is so weak that they cannot resist the temptation to abuse power. And the power to grant beingness, huh, to give identities, is also the power to take them away. And anyone who's been part of a big organization of any kind knows that the leaders and administrators use this power and sometimes they abuse it. Well, they can't really help themselves. The, the abuse of power comes along with the structure of a hierarchical organization. So we found this out the hard way. <laughs> After serving my Adi Guru, my spiritual master, for over 25 years, I decided to, to go independent because I felt I could do a better job than the people who were running his organization. And what I found out, make a long story short, is that as long as we were following this model of a hierarchical organization with a guru and teachers and administrators and then the congregation and all like that, the same problems will come up again and again. 
You can't escape it. It comes along with the structure, with the context. As we have said many times, and our research revealed, when we were trying to understand the disaster <laughs> that happened in that group, context creates meaning. And what is identity? It's a type of meaning. So as soon as you bring in a context that one person is better, higher, more advanced, or whatever, at that point, you also sign up for the problems that go along with that. So after researching for many years and traveling all over and studying many different paths, we finally discovered the Sri Vidya. And the Sri Vidya is very wonderful because in the Sri Vidya scriptures, there is no hierarchy. It's you and the Universal Mother. In fact, the Universal Mother is you. <laughs> Everything that you could identify as myself, my identity, who I am, is actually her. Your body, your energy, your intelligence, even your consciousness. Huh? She's called the Chit Shakti. Chit means consciousness. So if she is Chit Shakti, then who are we? Well, and this is the uh, train of thought that leads to the realization that Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. I am not an individual. I am not separate. I am part of the whole. Huh? There is Nirguna Brahman without qualities and Saguna Brahman with qualities. So in other words, whatever is there, whatever we perceive, or whatever is existing is Brahman. Maybe it's uh, Brahman without qualities, like pure awareness, uh, Shivo, Ham. Or maybe it's the world and all these objects called Jagrat, meaning so many things. That is also Brahman. It is Brahman covered by Upadi, different qualities that obscure and obfuscate its real nature, but it's still Brahman. So, Brahman or God is supreme, whether in the inner world or the outer world. And the way we get ourselves into trouble is that we take on an identity and then we get involved in the process of becoming, which we've gone over again and again and again in many, many series on this channel. Uh, so <laughs> the answer to the problem of identity is to gradually purify one's identity by spiritualizing it. In other words, rather than identify with one's job or family position or body or name or something like that, one identifies in karma yoga as a servant of God, in bhakti yoga as a lover of God, in raja yoga as one who is trying to realize God, and in Ajatavada as Aham Brahmasmi. <laughs> and this is the stage where all problems disappear, where all suffering is lost. Uh, the Buddha was one, once asked, what have you gained by all this meditation and renunciation and all this stuff? You know? And the Buddha says, I haven't gained a thing. <laughs> But I have lost my anger, I've lost my attachment, I've lost my suffering, I've lost my ignorance. You see? And because of this, then there is no more birth. There's no more bondage to the material world. One becomes free. What that means is the subject of a, of a whole other discussion. But the point is, 
Don't get trapped by identity, and especially the kind of identity that's given to you by others. If you have to have an identity, choose or create your own, because that is the first step on the path to liberation. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.